So, after having watched uh, The Printing Nerd and uh, Thomas's channel describing this new original Persa i3 MK2, I decided I'd go ahead and order the kit. And even though the website said it might be back-ordered and then the actual sales receipt, I got email sales receipt, said it might even be delayed four weeks. I had it nine days later, which was last night. Threw it together, took about six hours, working slow, not in any rush. To, uh, six hours to build it and calibrate it. And then uh, did the first print. First print I did as a, a part for a robot project because I, I don't really build print or build trinkets or anything. I design my own robots that walk and stuff. So this was one of the first parts and it just came out fantastic. And uh, as you can see it's running and we're talking over it. You can hardly hear it. Normally I do all my parts on uh, two Flash Forge Dreamers which, which are really great machines. I mean they just they're so solid but uh, they're also very loud. The fans are running and everything. I can't leave them in the house because you can't talk over them. You certainly can't uh, have anybody try to sleep while they're on. And they actually shake the whole house. The stepper motors are so powerful and they're always running in full power mode. I mean, you can take a dreamer and you can turn it on its side while it's printing. It doesn't make any difference. It just keeps printing. Um, but this, I did set it on a little piece of foam because this kitchen cabinet was acting like the sounding board and a piano. But once it's sitting on the foam, you can see, you just don't hear anything. It's uh, very quiet. You can just barely hear the two cooling fans running. And every now and then a little bit of stepper motor. And I'm not even in quiet mode yet. I mean, you, you can switch down into uh, quiet mode. Let's see if I can find it. Down here. Let's go to tune. And let's go down to high power. See, now we can switch. Now we're in silent mode. It isn't going to make any difference on what the fans sound like, but it cuts the power to the stepper motors. So if they were making a whining noise or anything that was bothering you, it won't. Pretty cool. Anyway, um, very pleased as far as a kit build goes. The uh, the pictures in the book, and you mainly rely on the pictures to build it, are very hard to tell anything from because one, they're really small, and, and two, the contrast on them is kind of poor. So you'll actually end up building the kit by using the online pictures because uh, you can blow them up full full screen on your computer and you can see all the details to figure it out what it is you're supposed to be doing. Main tips and tricks I can tell you. Everything you need to know is there in the instructions, but some of it leaves you wondering until later, so you kind of have to go back and redo things. One of the main things would be don't worry about when you're, you start by building this bottom carriage. Don't worry about tightening anything. Just kind of hand tighten everything because you're going to go back later and you're going to readjust them. They'll use the rods to set links and do different things. So if you torque everything down the beginning, you're just going to end up... Uh, loosening up all back up again. And I followed the instructions and everything came out 100% perfectly square and even. I didn't have to do any tweaking later on any of that. What else can I say? Oh, probably one of the most important things that isn't given enough time is their little magnetic uh, sensor down there that does the automatic bed leveling. If that's not set up right, you won't be able to do any of the calibration tests, so you won't be able to get the, the, the printer working right. And the book doesn't really cover, or even online, any detail, but the nuts and the bolts of it is, think of that as like a second print head. You want it as low as you can get it without it dragging. So it, you don't want it lower than the actual tip of your print head. You want it up a little bit, a few millimeters anyway. If it's up too high, it'll never find the magnets in the bed, and it'll never be able to self-level. And if it's too low, of course, then it would drag on your print. Other than that, good print, good printing machine, good price, relatively fun kit to put together. Right now, I'd recommend it. Of course, I've only, only had it a few hours now. And right now, I'm printing off the 
high, uh, one of the dinosaur heads that, that came on the flashcard on it for the grandkids. Like I say, the first thing I printed was one of my own files, which I'd get me out of the way first. <laughs> okay, that's it.